Guys, in this video, I'm going to do a very brief and basic introduction to R Markdown. What you're going to need to make this process smooth is R Studio, which is free, and of course, R. So be sure to have both of those tools before you start up. So if you're back after installing those, let's get going. Fire up your R Studio, and it should open up pretty much like this a fresh session. So what we're looking at here is R Studio. R Studio is an integrated development environment, an IDE, just basically like a GUI that makes working with R, which is the statistical software environment and programming language, smoother. So R Studio makes that smoother. Sometimes I work directly in the console and sometimes uh, it's more beneficial to work in an integrated environment, okay, like RStudio. All right, so supposing that you have RStudio set up and you're looking at a similar fresh screen like me, um, what we're going to do is just see what R Markdown is. So first off, uh, an introduction to RStudio is not really the point of this video, uh, so you should watch the video on that. Uh, to familiarize yourself with the basic navigation here but let's go ahead and start a markdown file so it's very simple it's basically just a text document um, let's go file new file and we're going to actually choose just the text file and we're going to get an untitled text kind of pane in this top left hand corner this is where we're going to create our markdown Okay, so before we actually do that, we can already go ahead and save. So let's actually save this, and I'm going to just throw it on my desktop. You could do whatever you like. Important thing here is, whatever you call it, end it in the extension RMD, okay? Short for R Markdown, you could guess. Save, okay? And automatically, R Studio recognizes an R Markdown extension and gives us a bunch of options, especially something we're going to use later, knit, okay, and some others, okay. So now let's kind of think of a little mini project we're going to work on so that we can actually have some content for our R Markdown. Um, actually, maybe we should even talk about what R Markdown is before we do that. Go to Help and then scroll down to markdown quick reference and let's and we get this really nice quick reference to how to use our markdown and it starts us off with a nice description of what our markdown is is nice and succinct our markdown is an easy to write plain text format pretty much based on plain markdown so R Markdown is an easy to write plain text format for creating dynamic documents and reports. Okay, so what is a dynamic document and report? Well, it's a document that's not just static. There's actual code that's driving the document. So for, that's useful if you need to share your work with multiple people working on, a similar, on the same project because it makes your reporting, your output, reproducible in a nice, tidy, as you're going to see, very well formatted um, presentation or report. Okay? So preferable, preferable to just copy and pasting your code into just plain text or into some kind of Word document or just PDF. This uh, allows someone to pick up your work, reproduce it, and actually get the output interlaced, so to speak, with the code itself. So it's, uh, if anything changes with the code, the output will also uh, update with no need for any extra kind of reporting, uh, tweaking of the report, or any processing afterward. Okay, so let's take a look at what I mean. All right, so let me just jump into the console and pretend I'm just working in the console here and come up with some kind of mini project for us. Okay, so let's deal with the cars data set. It's a very simple data set that comes with the package data sets. Okay, let's take a look at what it is. If you're not familiar with cars, it's a data frame with 50 observations, 
two variables, speed and distance. Okay, it's just want something to report on, something to analyze. So let's take a, a summary of cars. Okay, great. We see the min max of both the features as well as the mean, median, etc. Okay, great. How about a plot? A plot would be really nice. A very simple scatter plot here. Um, okay, great. Um, all right, that's something to start with. Let's uh, say this was part of my report, and I wanna, you know, uh, either I'm finished and I wanna share this with somebody um, for purely aesthetic purposes. They just want them to be able to look at my work in a presentable way, and or I want them to be able to reproduce my work uh, on their end with their R and their R Studio. Um, or maybe uh, I'm not quite done with my analysis and I need to stop and I want to continue later. Uh, these are all kind of uh, reasons why uh, our markdown was a preferred way to kind of uh, cap off my, my work, at least for the current session. All right, so let's see how I would actually do all this kind of, well, all this, all this, li this little analysis I did in our markdown. So over here, I'm going to actually refer to the quick reference and I see I can make headers like this using the pound sign. So let me start with a header. Uh, uh, analysis of the cars data set in R. Okay, uh, that's my title of my work. If I want a subtitle, uh, uh, also a uh, or we could say the author by Jalayer Academy all right great so I got a header and a sub a subheader okay now I can uh, insert some bold text uh, if I see right here I could put emphasis using some asterisks and say part one So here I'm going to do some summary statistics, uh, basically all the code I have here. So um, I, I can start typing some code. Data, cars, structure of cars, summary of cars, basically all the code I just had down there, plot of cars. Okay, but as you can see, uh, if I leave it like this, it's just going to come out as plain text. If I want this to actually be interpreted as our code, I need to hug this in a block or a chunk of our code. And the way you do that is with that little symbol on the uh, right below your escape key, right below the, it's on the same button as your tilde most likely. So if you do shift tilde, rather just tilde, three times, and then open these brackets, these squiggly brackets, and put R in there, and then close the chunk of code with just three of those. They look almost like a single quote. Um, you have just created a chunk or block of R code. And if, it, if we actually go to the reference again, we'll see R code blocks. And it tells you how to make a code block. Okay, great. So now when we actually knit this as our last step, this will get interpreted and run as our code. Okay, great. Let's do a little more so we have a little more uh, uh, to kind of learn here. All right, so let's say I want to make a uh, second part to my analysis. So, so let's say part two. Okay, uh, I want to start up some R code again, so now I know how to do that. And here, let's say I want a couple more plots. I want a histogram of um, speed. And you see, once I open a chunk of code uh, with this indicating that, um, R, uh, R Studio behaves just like uh, you would expect it to by uh, kind of expecting what I'm going to type. So like, for example, I start typing box plot and it gives me suggestions, right? As opposed to if I was just typing in a text editor. All right. So box plot and let's do a box plot of distance. Okay, great. I'm going to get two blocks, 
two plots there out of that chunk. And um, let me also show you how you can use inline code. So as a, uh, in addition to making blocks of code like we have here and here, let's clean this up a bit, format a bit, part spelled wrong. Uh, we can also use our markdown to produce inline R code or the results of inline R code. So let's say I want to maybe make a statement and in that statement I want something to actually be generated from R code as opposed to me hard coding it uh, or typing it literally. So we could do that. So let's say the average or let's say the mean speed of cars was and then I can actually type in 15.4 because I can do that in the console and see the result was 15.4 that's not so interesting or I can use inline R code in our, using R markdown by using that same uh, symbol like almost like a single quote but it's not quite it's right under your escape key R and then type my R code and then whatever when I'm done close that inline R code with the same symbol. So here it's going to be mean, the R code is going to be mean of cars dollar sign speed and R is going to evaluate that and actually put that the actual uh, a result of that uh, expression in this sentence. Okay, so all right, that's great. So blocks of R code, inline R code, we can also get use plain text by just doing plain code blocks where we just want to show code, but we don't necessarily want it to be uh, evaluated. We can also do that here using some several arguments like warning. You could do warning, true, false, message, true, false. You can do eval, true, false, which would totally uh, bypass evaluating this chunk of code. Um, you could do echo. Uh, true false which would actually uh, sh shut down the um, output of the code but still run the code so there's a lot of options you can uh, learn within each of these chunks for controlling how that code gets interpreted or whether it gets actually run or interpreted okay so I'll leave those to like a, a more intermediate level R markdown uh, tutorial but for now let's just kind of learn the basics of our markdown because there's a lot you can do with this even with the basics okay and let's just say I am done here so maybe I can end in a footnote the end uh, before I kind of knit this and render this um, let's take a look at some other things you can do latex equations you can insert page breaks you can put uh, links references uh, images, uh, anything you want uh, that you can kind of practically desire is within this very easy to learn quick reference manual which you again uh, get from the help menu our markdown quick reference okay very easy to learn after you do this two three times uh, you'll start be, uh, learning how to kind of uh, format and get everything you want in your R markdown. Okay, so let's say we're done and we have to leave. Uh, either we're completely done with our project or we have to pause for now. So we're going to go over, there's a few options. First off, let's save. That's saving the plain text. Basically what you see right here is going to be in a text document. And you can open it up on Notepad, on a PC or text edit on a Mac and you'll just see literally what you're seeing here. Okay, but if you want to actually render this and see the fruits of everything that we did, you hit knit. And in knit, you have a few options. You can knit to HTML, which is always my preferred choice, because HTML documents, usually no one has a problem viewing. You can open them up with any browser. PDF, Word, some of these, especially PDF, require some additional packages. Word obviously will produce a Word document. It's also uh, quite nice, but I'm going to always stick with HTML uh, unless I need to produce a Word or PDF. So I'm going to knit to HTML. So what's going to happen here, you're going to notice down here that our markdown is actually interpreting and rendering my markdown. And here is the 
result of that. So you see we have our header, our subheader, our just plain text that was bold, then our first chunk of our code. Data cars does not result in any output, so you don't see any output directly under it. STR does, so you see the output of STR directly under it in this white block. Then the next function I ran was for summary. You see the output directly under summary. And then plot, you see the plot directly under it. And then I was in part two where I had a second chunk of code. I asked for a histogram, so you see the histogram, the code as well as the output. Now, if you don't want to see the code, you can actually ask the code not to be echoed. So you could do that as well. Uh, that was some, those were some of the options that I showed you that you can use within the squiggly brackets in R. So within those squiggly brackets, you can say echo and set echo to, for example, to false. And uh, you will not see your code. Okay. All right. But if you want people to see your code, then you could show it like this. Okay. So it depends on what you want. You have full control. Uh, then here's the box plot. And then finally, so those were, those were all the blocks of our code. Finally, we also had some inline. Remember the sentence we created, the mean speed of cars was, and we actually didn't type this number. We actually typed the code to generate this number, remember? Okay, so remember we used this basically notation to, for, to actually ask for R to calculate the mean and put it in this place. We don't get to see that on this end, but this is dynamic. This is driven from the actual R code as opposed to me typing it in. And then finally our footnote, okay? Same goes for all of these plots and all of this output. These are dynamic output. Okay. You can also open in a browser so you could see what this looks like on, let's say, Chrome, which is my default browser. Okay, you see it looks really nice. I think I think this looks really nice, so, much better than you could produce if you had to copy and paste and format in a word editor, uh, a, a word document, uh, or or any kind of other editor. Okay. Uh, all right. Let's close this out and let me actually kind of show you what this looks like in its raw form. So what, what would you typically share or what would you kind of walk away with? <clears throat> well, the rendered versions are great for many reasons, for reporting, uh, not to mention the least. But for actually sharing and having the reproducibility aspect, this document that we originally created, test.rmd, is what's going to allow me to share and someone else can mark it can use our markdown on their R studio and knit it and render it as an HTML and get the output there or maybe make changes or maybe make additions they can reproduce my work as well as add or edit my work okay let me take, show you exactly what that looks like okay so I'm gonna go over to my I think I threw it on my desktop And you see it's literally a text document. You see all those annotations that we did, the markdown, it's all there. But it doesn't get interpreted here, it's just text. So it's plain text, that's what our markdown is, right? It's a way to format plain text. And on top of that, you add the R in front of markdown and you get to actually incorporate R code in there with blocks and inline. Okay, so I hope this was helpful. I hope you can, if you haven't already, that you can start incorporating our markdown into your workflow and producing these dynamic reproducible reports. All right, till next time, be sure to subscribe, watch other Delayer Academy videos and tutorials, and share. Have a great day.